Hey YouTube, this is Prince from Desi Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting Flutter video. And in this video, we are going to talk about forms and validation in Flutter. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, just as you can see, we have the simple app bar that just says some app. I don't have any amazing title. So the topic of this video, just as I've already said, is forms and validations. So we have already talked about text fields and text fields used to, you know, we have, we use that to input some text, we use that from decoration and we even tried to do some basic kind of validation, although I won't say that that was exactly validation, but using forms, we can do validation in a better way before submitting a form or before retrieving data out of it. So here in the padding, I'm saying that my child is going to be a simple form. Okay. Let me just put it in the center. And in the center, I have my child, which will be a simple form. Yeah, that's just the form tag that we need to talk about in this video. The simple form tag, which obviously won't display anything on the screen uh, other than the errors. Now in the form tag, we have child auto validate key on changed on will pop. We are going to first talk about child. Now the child can either be a single widget or multiple widgets. And in this video, I'm going to implement a simple login form. So in the child, I'm going to say that I have a column and the column will have his children. That will be a list of visit. And instead of using any simple text field, we are going to use text form field. And the text form field is almost like the text field, like any kind of decoration that you want to put. It's the same. If I just save it, you can see that I have that I have this very simple text field where I can put some data. If you talk about the decoration, it's again same. I'm saying decoration, which will be an input decoration. And here, if I just say border, it could be outline input border. I'm saying that I want a label after my border, label, and the label text is going to be email. Let's save it. So it's kind of amazing, right? Now to implement um, basic validation, let me just build the UI so that I don't have to waste much time where you will just listen to me typing this code, which obviously ain't great. I think that I have a very basic UI up and running. Now let's actually talk about validation. Now to implement validation using our form, we need a global key that will tell about and change of state in my visit. So to use that, we have to just go to our declaration of our visit. I mean the stateless visit and here I'll say global key and then space a name for my key let's say form key which will be a global key right done but since it's going to talk about form state we have to explicitly say that it will contain form state the same thing we have to do right here too so global key form state now we have to tell our form that this is the key that he has to work with so in my form we have this key i'll set that to this form key right now let's talk about very basic and simple validation we will first talk about custom validation something that we can code so let's say in our password here we can see that we have this text form field in the password let's say i want to do some kind of validation so i have to just call a validator I think, uh, okay, not in the padding, in the text form field, I have to just say validator and this validator takes a value, which will be the value at the present time. And then here, the logic is simple. If you return null, that means it's validated. If you return a string, that means there is an error. So if I say something like if value dot is empty, so if the value is empty, I want to say return R E Q U I R E D. Okay, I want to put some fancy giant error text. And in the else case, I'm saying else return null. So the logic is pretty clear, right? If I re if I have an uh, empty field, then I have to say that this is required. If not, I'm say return, which means it's validated. Now, how do we call this validation? Like if I click on login, nothing is happening, right? To call this validation, in this raised button, we have this on press. Let me just type cast this to let me just call a validate function right here and this is a custom function okay i have to code it so i will just go here and let's say that it returns a void validate and it takes no parameter and here i'm saying if i have to check if the current state of the form is validated or not for that we say if form key dot current state dot 
validate agar if this is validated then we have to say i'll just simply print validated right in the else case i will say not validated now if i save this if i click on the login button we get this error that says required if i put some data if i click on login again it says not i mean we have no error so this is a simple way using which you can we can perform validation now if you want to code this validator function somewhere else not in this way so i mean not in that in text form field so you can just simply code it um anywhere else just remember that it returns a string and then just name your function whatever it is i will say validate password and this validate password will again take a value remember that so i will just call this value as value now i have to just call this validate pass i'm saying copy and here in my validate pass okay, let's just not copy this let me just cut this and i have to say validate password okay but remember you don't have to pass the value just call it in this way and then in the validate pass i'll just paste this everything that i just copied don't need this line of code i don't need this line of code let me just select again format and okay select again format and here it is so this is a string a function that returns a string takes a value if the value is empty i'm saying required so if i just it is everything i click on login it says required now this is about our custom validation now there's a flutter plugin that helps us in validation in validation you know like if you have to implement email validation and all then even then either you can use regex or you can use this simple beautiful plugin that the plugin is form validator 101 so it's not 101 it's actually 1.0.1 that's the version so i'm just saying copy this then go back to files pubspec.yaml and here in the dependencies let me just paste this i'll save this and this will get the package for me and now i can use this package to implement validation while it does that, let me tell you, let me show you something else. Now our form has another property known as auto validate. If I set this auto validate to true, then it will check for validation while we are typing. For example, here, as soon as I type something, you see that the validation disappears. But if I set this auto validation to false or which it is false by default. So if I just comment it out and now if I just erase it, it won't. Okay, not that. If I just erase the value from my field, then it won't tell me whether it's not validated or it's validated. Only when I press the login button, it says that, hey, it's an error. Even if I type something and if I don't press the login button, it won't say that the error has gone. But if I use the auto validate true, then as soon as we type, as soon as we erase, it will just tell if it's validated or not. Now let's use the plugin that we just installed to implement some better validation. So I'm saying import and that plugin is package form feed validator space um slash validator dot dot now here i want to validate two things first of all email and password now the validation that i want to implement in this video is pretty simple my email should not be empty my password should not be empty my email should be a valid email address and my password should be should not be less than six as well as should not be greater than 15 characters because you know if I, if it is more than 15 characters then it might it might have some issues in hashing with some softwares but that's not up to us we are not sending the value in an api to actually encrypt it or hash it but let's just suppose that we don't want it to be more than 15 characters so we have to implement a couple of validations right let's first use this to implement the email validation so here if i go down you will see in the email in the form field that says email i'm saying call the validator now here our validator that the form fail validator plugin gives us a better option and that option is multi validation so i can implement multi rule validation very simply so if i if i want to implement just a single validation using our plugin then i have to just say let's say i just want to uh, validate email so i can say email validate so email validator it will just ask for the error text and if i say something like not a valid email then just this one single line of code and an import and it will validate the email for me now as you can see i have the auto validate to true if i just type some email it will say not a valid email if i put an at the rate nothing if i say gmail.com you see the error disappears right so this is how i can implement email validator now the 
issue with email validator is that if I just erase everything, let's say I erase this part, it says not a valid email. But if I erase everything, it doesn't show any error. So obviously I want the email address to be present. Like I don't want this field to be empty. That's where I say that I don't want just a single email validator. I want multi validator. And in the multi validator, one field, it is actually going to be a list. So one field will be this email validator. Other field will be a required validator. So I'm saying required validator and the other text would be, I'm just simply saying required. I'll just save it, uh, put a comma. And now you can see if I just type something, if I just erase it, it says required. If I start typing, it says not valid email. If I just type uh, valid email, then just the error disappears. Pretty amazing, right? Now let's do the same thing with password, but this time I'm not going to use this plugin. Like I just want to show you, you can even write your own custom validations. So here in the validate pass, I checked if the value is empty or not. And that, and that moment we say that, hey, it's required. If I want to do the same thing using the multi-rule validation, we have this minimum length validator too, which asks for a minimum length and the error text. Okay, let me just show you why just talk about it. So in the validator, I can say, using our plugin that I want a minimum length validator. It will ask for a minimum length. So let's say that I want a minimum length to be at least six and the error text will be, um, should be at least six characters. Okay, now if I save this and if I type a single character, it says should be at least six characters. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, just as we uh, type more than six characters, the error disappears. If I erase everything, it says, hey, it should be at least six characters. And I want to implement the maximum length validator. Now the plugin says that we can make our own validator using the plugin, but that will be, uh, the, but that process will actually be a bit tough. But, and this process that we just implemented could be more easy. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get rid of this minimum length validator that it um, just gives me by default. And I'm saying, hey, I'm going to use my own validation right here. And the name of my own validator is validate password. Obviously we don't have to call it like a function passing a value here in the validate password. The first thing that I want to check is that if the value is empty or not, then instead of just checking the else, I'm saying else if now I have to check if the value, okay, not validate value dot length L E N G T H if the value, come on. If the length of the value is less than six, in that case, I want to return a string that says should be at least six characters. In another else if I'm saying if the length is greater than 15 and it should be, should not be more than 15 characters. And then last but not the least, our simple else which will return the null. Now let's just save every, okay, come on. Why do I erase everything in this way? Now let's just save everything and let's just restart the application. Let's see what have we got. So somebody just turns on your, uh, or your app. And now with this simple line of code, you, we can validate a lot of things. Let's say somebody doesn't put any data on email. Then I'm saying, Hey, we want a valid email address. Come on, prince at gmail.com. By the way, this is not an email address. Don't try to mail me here. In the password, if I say, come on, one, two, three, four, five, hey, I need at least six characters. Okay, let me just type a lot more. Okay, not more than 15 characters, cool. So let it be somewhere between. And now if I press on the login button, it will say it says validated, like right? just as we need. Now that we know that this uh, fields are validated, we can call an API, we can put it in database, do whatever you want. That's pretty much from my side in this video. I'll catch you up soon in the next video talking more about coding, Flutter and whatnot. Till then, keep coding, keep loving, keep sending and peace.